everywhere I, I look in terms of our community, everyone is talking about decolonization and yeah. reclaiming their identity and their culture and their rights, rights to exist. What we can do is just educate our people about our ancestors and the, our indigenous practices. Yeah. So today we are shooting some media material for a gig that we're doing in Sydney. This is my canvas. Usually when I paint my face, there is either a motif where a mokoko I would go or it's empty. I'm figuring out how I can embody that part of Māori dim as someone who's gender fluid. Kia ora, my name is Jamie Waititi. I am from Te Whanua Apunui Te Rarua Ngāpuhi. I am gender fluid, so I prefer all pronouns, or I appreciate all pronouns. He, she, they, them, just not it. I don't identify as takatapui. Uh, I'm not gay or lesbian, uh, but whenever I have to communicate that I am a queer indigenous person, takatapui is probably the best word to use. My physical journey starts when I am seven years old. Um, and there was that book, it's like the Māori book of the daughter who copies her dad because she wants to be like him because she loves him. And he's like, you don't do that. That's what men do. And it was like shaving. And that was the one part that like got me where I was like, oh, but if I shave, then I'm going to be a man. <laughs> and I was like, this is going to be amazing. So I started shaving when I was like little. Throughout high school, there was all of that stigma. So I was shaving it away, shaving it away. So um, it wasn't until like 2016, I stopped shaving and was like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna let it grow. Like I'm at this point in my life where I'm identifying as gender fluid um, and I need to like, feel like it, not just like say that I am it. Young women bound in white believe in white guilt and white pride, palms pressed together like a trap. Today we are at Kete Aronui. We're here for a rehearsal for the reclamation show. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. It's basically about reclaiming our space um, and our stories being told by, by us, by brown Polynesian women. I do want to explore um, what it means, what power and pleasure means for a trans woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. they're just there to please the man, and then, oh, no, no, darling. Hello, <laughs> 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 Falava. My name is Felinci Filippo. Um, I am of Samoan descent. I was born and raised in Mangere in South Auckland. My mum and dad are from born in Samoa and they moved here as the old story goes to make a better life for their children. And look at me now. In Samoa they say we they call it Fafafine. People like us or the queer, um, we're all categorized under one 
So queer in general is fafa, fafa, so they see like a gay man and they just think fafa, or a trans woman, fafa, like fafa. fafa. Um, so if I went to the, cl the clubs in Samoa, there'll be a group of boys sitting down and you're walking out and a boy would say, and then I can, I, I'll, I'll hear it, then I'll stop, then I'll turn and look at them and they're like, and then they're like, oh my god, <laughs> like they'll just be like shocked. I would like to be identified as she or a woman. I saw identify as trans woman as well. I identify as both trans woman, women, but not they or the other one. <laughs> oh my god! Hi. Hi! Let me shout you some food. Oh my god! <laughs> Can I have a pepperoni? Karanga Pe Road is probably the safest place I feel for me in Auckland Central. You notice the difference if you're out somewhere else in the city and you get the, the second eye. I think it's totally unfair that I can't just feel like I can just be myself because of some unknown somebody out there that potentially doesn't like me being myself, like I think that's yeah. really unfair. Um, but like there's prejudices within the queer community, but yeah. um, how we view it, we just feel like we're all a minority anyway, so why are we all like pitting yeah. against each other to try to bring each other down? Um, but the majority of the time we're all together, I feel, but still got a long way to go. Mm. We are here at Basement Theatre, changing rooms. Uh, we are just getting ready for reclamation. Night number 11, I believe. Night number 10, night 10, I lied. Welcome to Trans Power 101. Yeah! yeah! The show is about female empowerment specifically brown women and um, those bodies that you don't normally see portrayed in the media but portrayed in a way that is more like celebrated as opposed to everybody's punchline. Trans women need to realise that what we are is enough. I got bullied a lot in school. One of the boys used to say um, during religious education, hey miss, um, He's a sene, and then I'd be like, and then the whole class would laugh and look at me, and I'm like, oh my god, can someone help me? Like, I feel like so, so hurt. That one was really tormenting because I, I didn't want to go to religious education anymore, and I used to be really strong on in faith in general, but ever since that incident, I've just been like, no. Now, we have worked so hard to be visible, yet we still give into a man's sexual desires and discount our own because we have status. Well, fuck that. <laughs> I came across a bit of research where there were um, observations of bishops who would merely just observe tribes. There are a few cases where a bishop fell in love with a Māori man and joined the village and lived quite comfortably within the village and the village was quite comfortable with them living together in the same house and having a loving relationship. Pre-colonisation being gender fluid um, in the Pacific it was seen as normal, so Fafa uh, Fini would be a blessing to have in the family. And then um, post-colonisation in the Pacific, gender fluidity was seen as a sin because that's when the, they started 
being more religious. But prior to that, it was totally fine. Like, there was never man, woman, there was always, everyone is fine here in the Pacific. You know, we accept everybody. I definitely think we're decolonizing ourselves. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And the more that um, everyone is vocalizing it, the, the more normal it becomes to have a decolonial conversation. Yeah, I feel like a lot of cis brown communities now, they, they understand the impacts of colonization because we're having more conversations about it. Yeah, I reckon we've got a, a long way to go. But we're going, you know, we're, we're here, we're out in the public, we're open, we're making moves, we're talking about it. So it's happening, it's just gonna take some time. Like it might not happen in our lifetime, but at least we're like moving. I'm gonna make it happen in my lifetime. <laughs> More things are possible. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. I always get excited when I talk about the future of queer yeah. communities. You should just be yourself and who you are as enough.